All right, this is an effect called Triumph, and it's an absolute classic in card magic. Let me give you a quick demonstration of what that would look like. Uh, we're going to start off by just selecting any random card from the deck. Let's say the Queen of Hearts in this case. So the first step is uh, we're going to lose the card somewhere in the center of the pack. And uh, let's give the deck a few shuffles and uh, just to make sure it's really mixed in there. Now to make it even more challenging, I'm going to give the cards kind of a strange shuffle by taking approximately half the cards and flipping them over. So now if I shuffle the two halves together, we're going to end up with uh, a bit of a mess. Okay, so now um, I don't know where your card is. I don't even know what direction your card is. Uh, we have cards that are face up, face down. It's just, uh, it's just a big mess. Okay, but here's the idea. If we do this kind of a, a secret move, here's what it looks like. I don't know if you noticed anything there, but if this worked correctly, now if we spread through the cards, what you'll see is that every single card should now be facing the same direction. Every single card except for one, which just so happens to be the Queen of Hearts. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Asad here. Welcome back to the 52 Quarts channel. In this video, I'll be teaching you the Triumph Effect. Amazing, amazing card trick. I highly recommend you learn it if you don't know how to do it yet. Um, it just gets amazing reactions and such a great method and everything. So before I get into the tutorial section of the video, I've got just a few quick announcements for you. Firstly, um, thank you for everyone who participated in the 1 million subscriber giveaway contest. A bunch of you got involved, so thank you for that. I've announced the winners in the description box down below, so please do check that out to see if you are one of the lucky winners. If so, congratulations. Uh, if not, no worries. Uh, I do plan on doing plenty of other giveaways and contests moving forward. Uh, by the way, the gold play button also finally arrived. It looks amazing. It looks like they updated the design. Gonna find a cool place to put it on the wall. Thank you once again, everyone, for celebrating this occasion with me. It's, um, it's an amazing milestone and I very much look forward to continuing this journey here on YouTube. Second announcement is that the Mint 2 decks are finally ready. I'm sure you guys noticed in the demonstration uh, video, I was using the brand new Blueberry Mint decks. All the decks, they came out amazing. They look amazing, they feel amazing. I can't wait to get them in your hands if you were a Kickstarter backer. I'll be taking a road trip later this month, next week actually, to the warehouse to help oversee the whole fulfillment process and uh, to ship out all the packages to you. So uh, that being said, let's get into the tutorial portion of this video so that you can learn how to do the Triumph Effect. All right, let's get into the handle link for Triumph. This is, again, one of those classic effects in card magic. It spawned uh, countless versions and variations throughout the years. I'm going to be covering a version that is very similar to the original publication uh, from Die Vernon. It is a slightly modified handling, so I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, you know, I do feel like that the original handling is still one of the best. Super clean, super direct, and extremely strong when done correctly. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to start off by having a card selected from the pack. Let's say this one, Ace of Clubs. And uh, the first step is you need to secretly control their card to the top of the deck. Okay, I've taught a bunch of different card control techniques throughout the years here at the 52 Cards YouTube channel. Um, you can use any method that you want, whichever one you're most comfortable with. The one that I used in the demonstration video, I did make a, a full tutorial on that method, so I'll link you to it uh, on the screen here and in the description box down below. But briefly, I'm sticking that card through the side of the deck, and then it looks like I'm just pushing it flush with the deck, but really, that card pops out the back. And from there, you know, from the front, you can't tell. But from behind, I can just uh, convert that into a break, and then I shuffle that card right to the top. And then I'll usually follow up with a few more shuffles while maintaining that, uh, that card on top of the deck. Okay, here's a little subtlety. I believe I've taught this before, but um, when doing consecutive riffle shuffles, the first time, I'll pull the top half to the left, keeping that topmost card on top. And then the second time I'll shuffle, I'll pull the topmost half to the right. That way it subtly looks like uh, I'm shuffling a different card to the top each time, but I'm not. Their, their card is still always gonna be on top. From here, you're gonna get into the idea of 
doing um, kind of a strange shuffle to make it even more challenging. So at this point, you're going to break the deck in half again. And the bottom half, you're going to flip face up. Okay. At this point, I'll spread through each half, showing that half the cards are indeed face up. And now I'm going to do um, a false shuffle technique known as the Zaro shuffle. Okay. Originally, the way that this is taught is using a push through shuffle. Um, personally, I prefer a Zaro shuffle, which is why I do it that way, and that's the way I'm going to teach it. So I've made a full tutorial on the Zaro shuffle in the past. I highly recommend you look into that if you're not familiar with it. This is a, the hardest part of the trick. It is a bit of an advanced false shuffle technique. So I'm not going to go into too much detail now because I've already taught it in full detail before. So um, refer to that video if necessary. But briefly, what's happening here is I'm shuffling the two halves together. And then in the process of pushing the halves together, I'm doing this move where I'm kind of dislocating the right hand cards and basically pushing the entire block of the right hand cards underneath the topmost left hand card. But I'm doing it in such a way where it should just look like I'm shuffling and pushing the two halves completely together. That's the Zaro shuffle. Check the video out if, if you need to. Once I'm done with that Zaro shuffle, I'm in this position. Half the cards face down, half the cards face up, followed by the face down selection, the ace of clubs. Now at this point, I'm gonna do a really brilliant display. This is called Daryl's display. Um, it's first published by Daryl. So it's uh, an amazing um, technique. I, I would hardly even consider this a move, but it's, it's a great way to show that the deck is completely mixed up, face up, face down, and kind of a big mess. So here's how that works. I'm going to be splitting the deck in half. I want to cut to a face-up card. So I want to cut a little bit above the halfway point. There we go. I just want a face-up card. I cut that across. And at this point, I'm going to cut each of these halves, or yeah, each of these two packets in half. And then I move those two halves forward. So now I'm showing two face-down cards, two face-up cards. And then once again, I'm going to be cutting these two packets in halves once again. And then I bring it here. So keep in mind that first cut goes to the out, you know, to the outer edge of my area. And then I'm bringing this half. And when in the process of doing this, you don't want the cards to really spread out. You want to make sure that they stay square because if they kind of spread, um, you're going to destroy the illusion a little bit. But that third sequence, I'm cutting and bringing those to the middle. So you're showing three face down cards, three face up cards. And um, that's just very convincing that you did in fact shuffle face up cards into face down cards. Once you're done, with, or you would pause here for a beat. I bring these cards, I slap them back on top. I might want to leave it kind of side jog for um, if you want, just to kind of further demonstrate the messy nature of things. And then you're just going to return back to where you were and square up. Really beautiful display. I highly recommend you do that as an extra convincer. At this point, you're going to say, you know, I usually say this um, as I'm doing this motion. I say, look, we have face up cards. I'm going to cut in the upper half. So I say we have face up cards. And at this point, you want to cut exactly at the middle where you have this back to back separation. Okay. So these are all the face up cards. These are all the face down cards. You want to cut exactly there. And that's actually a lot easier than it sounds because um, just because of the nature of cards, you know, there is going to be a natural break at that point. So if you just attempt to cut somewhere near the middle, chances are you're going to cut exactly where you want. Okay. Um, just try it out, you know, and you'll see that it works um, because these cards are kind of slightly bending up. These cards are slightly bending down because, you know, just because of the direction and you'll be able to cut there. So you say, I have face up cards. I have face down cards. That, kind of, that time I missed, right? But it's okay because, you know, you just come back and you try again until you hit the face um, the back-to-back -back area. So let me square up, and there it is. Okay. Once you've hit the back-to-back -back, uh, situation, I'm going to transfer these cards to my left hand. In the process, I'm turning them over, like so. I'm picking up the bottom half. I'm showing this. And then as I replace this, I'm turning it back down. And what's that? what that's doing is it's reversing all those face-up cards, and it's basically getting you into the exact end position that you want where 
only their card is now reversed in the deck. The rest is all presentation. So I would really milk that, like really build up to it. Don't do not do the reveal super fast, um, you know, build some suspense. And then finally, after you do some kind of magical move, you know, you can present it however you want. That's completely up to you. But then you slowly reveal that all of the cards are now facing the same direction, except for their card. Some people may prefer to spread through the cards face up first and be like, all of the cards are now facing the direction except for one. And then you have that secondary suspense where you can slowly and dramatically reveal that the card that is still reversed is in fact their card. So that is Triumph. I hope you love that effect. If you did, please do give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell button, leave a comment down below letting me know um, which version of this effect that you like, if you, if you are familiar with any other versions of Triumph, or just leave any other comment. I love reading your guys' comments. Um, but thanks once again for tuning in, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.